on June 27th. So please uh, give it up for our last candidate, John Sakelos. Come on down, John. I have no special information. 
saying that you don't have. What I will say is that there used to be a program called PEG, PEG, and it was programmed to eliminate the gap. It was cut the first year of Mayor de Blasio's tenure, and unfortunately our city council, which is supposed to be a stopgap on mayoral power, didn't push him to reinstate it until last year, and now it's kind of a, a shadow of his former self. But from 2010 to 2013, PEG, um, Program to Eliminate the Gap, found, I think, something like $23 million in savings and sped up every single project that they were involved in analyzing. This is, this is an independent commission that was around to go to a specific construction site or a specific job site and say, hey, this is what you're doing wasting taxpayer money. At the end of the day, our city council should be stewards of our wealth, all of our wealth. Everybody pays in to our property taxes. We're paying a lot of money to our property taxes. Our city council has done a deplorable job in actually being custodians of our well-being. And our well-being, in this case, is our tax dollars. Um, so yeah, so I think we should have got uh, it to peg, and that project um, needs to be totally overhauled, and any match movement that was on the upper echelon of that, I think should be removed. I also think there should be a system of meritocracy in city projects, where if you are not up to snuff and getting the job done correctly, just like in the private sector, we're going to replace you. It's not a free bank roll, and it's stopped. we have to stop allowing them to use our money and allowing us to write blank checks for them to keep cashing in. Tony Avella, I wish he stayed. He was in office 18 years. He's been talking about the same problems for 18 years, but he's been cashing paycheck every day. Same thing with most of our elected officials, and that's why we need to get out and vote. That's our only recourse. So I actually haven't heard this rumor. Tonight was the first time I heard it, so I'm going to bring it to my attention. Thank you. Um, I would oppose it. I, first of all, the, the MTA budget comes from the state. It's approximately $4.5 billion. Yet, we have one of the worst maintained subway systems in regards to our population. New York City moves over 8 million people a day. They do this in Europe with the same relative size, like population per train, let's say, with much ease and much more you know, forgive me for saying it, but it's cleaner, it's faster, it's more efficient. Well, why is that? Well, the reason for it is that they brought in, for the most part, private sector contractors to route and plan and organize their trains. What we're seeing from the city, for, especially for the MTA, is there's a level of bu bureaucracy that has infected into the system where nothing gets done. Oh, people are abusing their overtime, uh, let's just slap the supervisor on the wrist and, you know, it's okay, it's city money anyway. Well, it's our money, and it's time that we stood up for it and said, listen, we pay this money in because we receive services out. If you're not going to give us the basic services that we're paying in for, there's a problem in this relationship, right? So um, I would be against defunding any uh, bus routes, especially here at College Point where we needed to get to Main Street. And uh, I would support a uh, uh, express bus service from the edge of the peninsula all the way, um, if not to uh, Main Street. I would also like to see it to the Long Island Railroad Station.
but the 51 members of the city council are meant to be a stopgap stop on mayoral power. All 51 of those members banded together equals one mayor. Actually, 27 of them and a half banded together equals one mayor through the majority. But we have the power of the budget. We have the power of our discretionary funding. If enough city councilmen got together, and if our city councilmen, who unfortunately I don't think did a good enough job as fighting a lot of these programs that have been put in place, I also don't think that vote that he took to defund the NYPD was reflective of what this community wants. Um, just let that happen. And that's a mistake and a dereliction of duty on our current elected officials' part, but we can all change it by going to the polls in June and picking who we think will be the best representation for the people in our so I would be opposed to that. Sure. And our last and final question for the evening, question number five. As a city council member, would you be willing to use your discretionary fund or, you know, advocate with other city council members to help fund the smaller, mobile 109 police precinct located in College Point? And secondly, would you be able to try to get the citywide facility of the NYPD Academy that's in College Point? as part of their training program, potentially, to have cadets from the academy that are here anyway, uh, possibly train and patrol in and around the College Point area. So, um, thank you for the question, and I'll, I promise I'll be quick. This is the question I was most excited to talk about. So, um, here in College Point, I go outside today, I have a 1 in 700 and a, a 1 in 271 chance of being the victim of vandalism. If I go all the way on the other side of our district to Little Neck, it's 1 in 10,000. I step out into College Point. I have a 1 in 375 chance of being a victim of assault. I go all the way out to Little Neck, I have a 1 in 2,600 chance of being a victim of assault. Really, this is where I got it. So, why do we have this discrepancy when it's across an entire same city council district? It's not the fault of the 109th precinct. Those guys have had their hands tied behind their back by our current city officials with the passage of Local Law 66, which I'm opposed to, and the defunding movement, which I'm opposed to. I think we need to refund the NYPD the billion dollars and give them an additional billion dollars so they're able to be a true preventative police force, like they were back under Giuliani, as opposed to right now, which is a reactionary police force where they don't have enough time to catch all the, the bad guys. And when we do catch the bad guys, thanks to our bail reform law, they're released the same day. So, I, I, I might be the only candidate to say this, but no, I wouldn't use discretionary funding. You know why? Does anybody know what percent of the budget the NYPD, FDNY, and Corrections is? Come on, I've got three other candidates. It's 10 percent. That is woefully inadequate, considering that we spend 20 percent just on the fringe benefits for city servants. So I disagree with you respectfully, sir. I think, I, I don't know what the voodoo math was, but Opening a precinct here in College Point is a no-brainer. We have the police academy here. We have a higher crime crime rate than anywhere else in the in the uh, in the city council district, and we have the resources and the ability ready to do it. It's already an open complex, so we hire two or three police officers to um, to stay overnight. Personally, I don't care about parking if I'm getting shot. I don't care if there's no parking for police. Oh, wow, a police precinct is here. I have to look for a parking spot. Hmm. Let's have them kick them out. Maybe I'll get mugged on the way home. That, that doesn't seem like a solution to me. So I would be very much in favor of making, uh, I, I, I don't know if we can call it a mobile unit, perhaps an auxiliary unit, not an auxiliary police unit, but a, a peripheral unit here in the uh, training academy. That way that the community of College Point receives the attention that they deserve. It's not the 109th Precinct's fault. They're, they're just as brave and just as good of police officers as they are in Little Neck as they are in College Point. It's a, it's a space and response issue time. And frankly, it's also a culture issue in that the city council and our current city councilmen and our past elected officials have put College Point on the back burner. And up oh, doesn't, you know, we'll get to the next legislative session. We'll get to the next legislative session. Oh, when I'm city councilman, when I'm state senator, when I'm this, when I'm city councilman again. How many times, how many chances you want to fix the job? Alright? So I, I, I think that's Oh, um, if you have a phone number, you can 
number, website? Yes, you can contact me on www.johnjohn4ny.com. My cell phone's on there, my email's on there. I also have an office above 57's Diner on Francis Lewis in um, off 34th Avenue. So if you want to buy the cheesecake and to talk about the budget, please come on down. Thank you guys very much, and thank you, Mr. Mark. Okay, thank you, John. So I just want to say, uh, before we wrap it up, uh, this was our first candidates night uh, in years. I don't know if we even uh, had one in prior years, not that I can recall. We've always had candidates, but not um, a full candidate.